Hey guys, it's me. The biggest disappointment you know. Actually, that fits in beautifully with today's video. Didn't mean to do that on purpose. But today's video is going to be about the fact that I am a struggling actress. Ding! Again, by the time you're watching this, a lot of time will have passed and hopefully things will have changed. Hopefully. But basically, I wanted to make this video kind of from the viewpoint of an actress trying to make ends meet in the UK. Because I kind of grew up, maybe not really, but you know, in my teens was watching Carrie Hope Fletcher. And she kind of always seemed to just have it going for her. She's very talented and I'm sure she's had to deal with things that maybe she didn't talk about, but it did kind of seem like, oh, okay, she's got a job and she's got another job and she's got another job and she has YouTube and she's writing, you know, everything's working for her. Again, I'm sure it's not as easy as it seems and I do really enjoy watching Carrie, I still do. So this is in no way a dig at her, but the reality of it is not that. I moved here, what, four years ago? And I spent the first few months trying to do something acting-y and then nothing really happened and I kind of just ended up traveling a lot, which was amazing. And then, and here's a little secret I haven't told anyone, then I went to drama school. Yeah, I hid that from you pretty well, didn't I? <laughs> I think anyway. I'm not gonna say which drama school I went to, simply for privacy reasons, I think. If I change my mind by the time this video goes up, I might like write it down below because I did love my drama school. I had a great time. It was sadly over COVID, which meant, you know, we missed out on a lot of in-person training, but actually the school was quite supportive with sort of alternatives or whatever. And they were, I think, one of the first to go online. Like from what I remember, we closed Monday night. So we had Monday in school and then Monday night we came home and found out that we were closed. I think I flew on the Wednesday to Australia. And then I think by the Thursday or at least by the Friday, we were already doing some classes online. So they were pretty on it. And the classes online were great. Obviously nothing's quite the same as being in person, but they were very good, even though I was doing them at midnight, one in the morning or two in the morning. But anyway, fast forward a few years, I graduate. And then because of COVID, they said, because it was a two year course, but they said, look, if anyone wants to stay on for a few extra months because of how much you missed out in person, you can. And I had no other real plan. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So I ended up staying on until February, at which point I'd got a job. I got the job, I think in January. And then I came back to London to do rehearsals. And then I flew off to Greece. And then I came back and flew off to Lapland. And then I came back and look, I'm filming this at the end of February. So it's only really been about six weeks. Oh, and also in February last year, I got a fantastic agent who I love very much. And it was kind of just by chance that I happened to find out about her. It was through someone I was doing rehearsals with and he mentioned her and I figured I'd send her an email and lots of my material. And she was happy to take me on, which was just incredible. Obviously we had an interview and everything, but yes, I love her dearly. She's fantastic. She's so supportive, really good. But then I've been here and lots of things have come through into my inbox. I've done a fair few auditions. Although first of all, how it works a lot of the time is my agent will send me through something and say, are you interested in being submitted for this? And like 90% of the time I'll say yes. And then she sends off my headshot. And then that's it. And based off basically my headshot alone and maybe my like profile, they will either ignore me, which is the majority of the time, or every so often they will send back and say, yes, we would like to see her audition. Sometimes it skips that first step. Sometimes it goes straight into, we would like to see her audition, which is always nice. And then I do an audition. And actually until now, I think it's only been self-tapes. I don't think I've done any in person yet. A self-tape is basically a video audition. And then again, a good percentage of the time, I just hear nothing back. Occasionally I'll get a no. And so far I haven't got any yeses. Again, it's only been a few weeks. And I already knew I was going away for like a month in March slash April, which kind of limits me in a lot of things. And I think I've mentioned before, I am unbelievably grateful to be staying with my grandmother because it means I have very few costs. I'm not paying rent. I'm not really paying for food. I pay for travel, but that's about it really. But because I'm going away, not just can I not get an acting job, I can't get a regular job either. So I'm kind of eating into my savings from last year, which is why it's really good that last year I didn't have to pay for very much. Now, when I get back from Australia, I think things will change. I'm gonna talk to my parents about it and figure out what I'm gonna do. But I imagine by the time you're watching this video, I've probably moved out. I've probably got some sort of job, even if it's not acting, you know. And I'll be honest, I'm fine for now. Obviously I would really love an acting job or performing or singing, dancing, whatever. But also I'm not too fussed because I know and actually, I didn't mention this earlier. I turned down three job offers at the start of this year. And that was because I knew I wanted to go away to Australia. I hadn't booked it yet, but the offers I was given weren't something I was 
so desperate to do that I was willing to give up Australia, if that makes sense. Especially because I had to give up so much last year and I just felt like, no, I need to do some things for myself. And one of those things is to be able to say no and go to Australia. And I let all three of those companies know I will be available after the 1st of May. So if you want me then, I'm yours. But the reason why I'm making this video is for any other actors, actresses, performers out there, just to say, it's not as easy as some people make it look. And I'm hoping that by the time you're watching this, I do have a performing job. That would be awesome. There's one I've kind of got my eye on in Holland that I'm like, oh, that would be really nice. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. The way I kind of get through it myself, and I know this won't work for everyone, but it works for me, is I do an audition and then I forget about it. I try not to pin any hopes on it. I work hard for the auditions, I definitely do my best, but once I've sent them off, that's it. Because it's so rare for me to even hear a no back, let alone a yes, I'm just like, if I forget about it, then I don't realize what I'm missing out on. And then occasionally I'll get an email a few weeks later saying, oh no, thank you. And I'll be like, what was this for? But I think that works because otherwise I'm gonna lose my mind. And look, I'm only six weeks in, maybe six months in, I'll be feeling a lot more down. There's definitely the potential of that. But there's something within me, there's this hope, there's this faith that like something good is going to come and I will get an acting job. It might just take its time to find me, you know? I think I've said everything I want to say. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them down below. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of give a bit more of the reality of trying to make things happen in London because it's not that easy. <laughs> Would you believe it? That is all from me for today, and I'll see you all shortly. Bye!